Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. Today's video is a little bit different than my usual art tutorial since I'll be drawing this in black and white. As always, I use pan pastels for my underlayer. I'm only using the black and white pans of course. And for the details, I'll be using black and white pencils from different brands but more about that when I get there. Let's first start with my underlayer. I just took a bit of the black pan pastel on my tool and I spread this out. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that you can't go too dark with the background. I'm aiming for a mid-tone, this way when I work on my subject I can easily go darker and lighter to emphasize shade and highlights. I'll also put some white on my tool and drag this over my paper. I just did this randomly to make it look a little bit more interesting. The drawing I'm creating today can be called the grayscale art or tonal art. In theory you could call it monochromatic since it only uses shades from one color or hue, but I think this is more reserved for art where an actual color is used. In creating these drawings we'll only be using shades from a tonal value scale or chart. Let me pull this up so you can see how it looks. So this goes from white all the way to black with that mid gray I wanted to use for my background in the middle. Values more towards white are high key tonal values and values more towards black are low key tonal values. And to make things complete I'll show you an example of a monochromatic piece. Here the artist just used the color blue. By now I started working on the tree. For the tree I used the black soft pastel, I used this for two small reasons. The first one is because it's a little bit faster than pan pastels if you want deep dark black. You'll also achieve this with pen pastel, but the soft pastels are the type of pastel that disperse the most amount of pigment. So in this case, where I won't be adding tons of layers, I didn't mind if the paper would clog up faster. And the second reason is because that if I'm using another brand of black, my black will look a little bit different. Of course, if you keep adding black, you'll eventually reach an almost similar black with every brand, but until you reach that, there are subtle differences. So since this is carbon black from Unisons, why not? If you can't do this because you have a smaller arsenal to work from, you'll be perfectly fine with your tools. There were areas where I marked my darkest values, so that is also how I applied my color. This way, as you can see, when I blended this out on top of the tree where my lights hit the tree, it's still relatively light. And then I'll just use my black and white pencils. So the top part of the branch is where my biggest highlights are, while on the bottom part I want a lighter value to indicate some of the details there. As you can see, a good underlayer will get you very far. Because I left the top part as good as blank, you already get a lighter shade there. I also applied my white in a horizontal way here. This way the white follows a horizontal pattern equal to the way bark would lay on a branch. For the squirrel I also used a very small blending stump to give me a lot of accuracy. When I'm working on the head, it's important to leave some areas light such as around the nose and towards the mouth, which is where the blending stump comes in handy. The area in between I'll shade very lightly, but I'll add a bit more pressure for the mouth, underneath the ear and underneath the head. I'll also fill in some of the body before I'll blend it all out. I don't add a lot of details to my line art, just the basic outlining and a few lines here and there to indicate where I want my darker values. For the chest I didn't even add any more pigments, I just dragged my blending stump in the branch and used this to add a little bit to the chest. And then I started to add some white fur on the head. Just like always I follow the direction of the fur. I'm going to use a lot of black slash darker fur where I want the highlights next to it to really pop, which was the case here on the muzzle. The rest is mostly just white with black to mute it back down on areas where I wanted it to be darker. On other areas like on top of the ears, there will be a few layers of white on top to make sure that it looks like them catching the light. I also use white to help me build the eye. And next up is the chest and because my underlayer is much lighter here, I immediately have a lighter tone and again I will go over the edge more because there it catches the light even more. Now surprisingly, I'll use black on the side of the squirrel here and not white. The side is a much darker area and because I have a mid-tone for my underlayer, I can indicate darker fur by using black. Same like with lighter areas, where I want more shade, I'll go over this a few more times. Now I will go over this with white after this black layer, since the fur there still catches light. I just need it to be darker in this area. 
where I want my highlights to be the brightest, I'll just go over there more times than on other areas. And you'll also notice that I'm using two pencils for my white values. For most of the white values, I use the white pencil from Faber Castell. This is a very good white pencil that has no trouble laying white on top of other colors, or in this case, on top of black. The other white I'm using is from Carandash, which is by far my favorite pencil when it comes to white. This is because the pencil is very soft, in my opinion this brand is the softest available, and because of this it has an easier time getting the pigment on even when there are already very dark values. You can easily spot the difference between the two pencils. Again on top of the squirrel is where the light hits the brightest, so I will make sure to add white here. I use the pencil from Karandash for this, and this is how I will keep building the fur. Now why are tonal values so important? Well we can't see objects without light. If there was no light source everything would just be pitch black. So in order to draw or paint objects in a realistic way we must have an understanding of light. And when we draw in color we also have this effect of light and dark in play, but we already need to take into account the different colors. So one of the ways you can practice your values is by drawing with only black and white. Value is just how light or dark something is on a scale of white to black. And it is by using the right values that you'll create realistic pieces. Now if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. And don't forget to hit the bell as well if you want to be notified when I post new content. By now I'm done with the tail. You might have noticed that I used another black and you are right. This is the black from Creta Color, and I personally find this to be the blackest black pencil out there. So not only did I use this for the tail, I'll also use it to increase my values here and there where I want it to be really dark. I don't draw a lot of tonal art but I definitely liked drawing this piece and I'm very happy with the result. So what do you think of this drawing? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and I also have a lot of other videos on my channel that might interest you, so definitely check them out. Next Friday I'll be back with another video, see you then and in the meantime I hope you have a great week.